today, and we're glad you're online here to watch with us too as we go deeper into God's Word today. God bless you for being with us. Hallelujah. Uh, we had one announcement tonight. Elder Marcello wanted me to let everybody know that tomorrow night, that's Thursday night down in Rockwood at the Patterson's Complex, there's going to be a drive through prayer service down there. So if anybody is needing prayer or wants to participate in that, uh, those of you here in the sanctuary can get with Elder Marcella for further details. And if you're out there watching online, just know that that's tomorrow evening down in Rockwood. If you go down that way toward Patterson's, I'm sure you'll find out more. Amen? Well, tonight we've got a very special guest with us all the way from Middlesboro, Kentucky, Reverend Nick Whalen of CGMA, a.k.a. Big Red. Hallelujah. Let's make him feel welcome here tonight as you come up, brother. I give the Lord a hand clap of praise this evening. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thankful for every opportunity I get to step behind the pulpit and preach the word of the Lord. Uh, thankful for the calling that's on my life. Thankful for uh, Pastor Nick and his friendship. And thankful for this church and uh, the, all the times that I've been here, whether it be just participating in the service or uh, preaching or just here in general worship. It's, you've all been so welcoming, and, and I love the church in Harriman. I keep up with you, and uh, thankful for all the good things God's doing here, and thankful for all the things that God's going to continue to do. If you got your Bibles with you tonight, won't you turn with me to the book of James, chapter number one. I'm going to read a few verses of scripture there, six verses, starting with verse number 19. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say oh my. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse number 19. And the word of the Lord says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and simplicity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was." But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Can we pray? Father in heaven, Lord, I'm thankful, God, for your precious word. I'm thankful for this wonderful church. Thankful, God, for the calling that's upon my life. Lord, I ask you, Lord, right now, I can't do nothing behind this pulpit. But God, I ask, Lord, that you'll touch my lips of clay that this word you've stirred in my heart and in my spirit, God, for this church, that I'll be able to present it, God, the way you want it to be presented. God, touch my lips of clay as I break your holy word, Lord, in your name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This, this passage of scripture in James, it begins talking about trials make patience, and, and it goes on to talking about all these things and talking about the importance of, of being a doer as well as a hearer. And when I was reading this and studying church, I began to uh, prepare and uh, look at this. And he was, when I thought about the definition of a doer, the dictionary says the person who does something, a person who acts rather than merely talking or thinking, that they're a doer. They, they, they get in there, they participate, they do what's asked of them. And then I began to think about what James was saying there. He says, for if any hearer of the word and not doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Look over at your neighbor and say, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. That's the word that God put in my heart. I started thinking about church, of what James was trying to tell to the church and what he was trying to present there. About have you ever, When you look in the mirror, we don't forget overnight what we look like, do we? When we're looking in the mirror and we're fixing our hair and we're brushing our teeth and we're doing those things, we know what we look like, how we, how we present ourselves. 
And, 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 when we, and we don't forget that. But can you imagine if you woke up one morning and you looked in the mirror and the person that you saw in the mirror was not the same person that was there before you laid down at bed that night. And I begin to say, Lord, where are, you, where are you trying to go? What are you trying to do? And the first point that I want to get across today is the importance of hearing. James tells us there of the importance of putting, one, putting, putting yourself, oneself, in a place to be able to hear, to be able to receive that that God wants to say. When you're in a place of God's word, it's very important. Romans 10 and 17, Paul wrote to the church, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And when we think about that, when we hear the word of God, church, it begins to change our direction. It begins to change our situation. I feel the Lord here tonight. And it begins to stir in our hearts. Have you ever been in a place, church, when, you, when, you, when you've just needed a word from the Lord? When, you, when you've just been longing for a word from the Lord? And you've been in that place where the storm winds has blew you so far off course that you don't know where it is that you are. And then the, the rains are pouring down upon your head. And you don't know which way to turn. But church, I have come this way to give you a promise thereof that if we are hearers of the word and that we are doers of the word then God himself is faithful and just and he hears his cries of his people you hear him he hears you being a doer our faith and our knowledge it comes from hearing Pastor Nick Hebrews 2 and 1 says therefore we ought to give the more earnest Heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip. What do you mean, preacher? I mean that when we've been told the good, they call the gospel of Christ the good news. When we've been given the good news, should we hide it under a bushel? Should we turn around and keep it to ourselves? But no, we need to tell those that are lost and dying in sin of the word of the Lord. Being a doer for the kingdom of God. I tell you what, Satan wants us to be dumbfounded about God's word. He don't want us to understand it. He doesn't want us to comprehend it. More or less, he doesn't want you to hear it. And he definitely don't want you to do it. But the enemy comes to do nothing but kill, steal, and destroy He's like a roaring lion reaping to and fro, seeking whom he may devour tonight, church. And I tell you what, if we let the enemy talk in our ear and not the word of God, then we can find ourselves being guilty of not being a doer as well as a hearer. Luke chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said, Yet yeah, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Is what he told his disciples. What we hear, church, how dear is it that we keep it unto ourselves? Don't let the enemy steal it from you. And don't let the enemy take the peace that God has freely given. Think about that for a moment. You say, what he's freely given. And he's given. When you're being a doer for God, then you're being a vessel. And when you're doing the things that God's done, told his disciples... For two, over 2,000 years ago, then you are being in an obedient vessel for the Lord. Not only are you hearing what's being preached, but you're doing what He wants you to do. What a great place to find oneself tonight, church, doing what God wants you to do. And when I started thinking about that, when, when God began dealing with me there and understanding how important it is to hear and do, what happens, what transpires from what James tried to tell the church when James wrote this? What was he trying to get across? When you're hearing the word of God and it's changing your life, it's changing your direction, and when you're doing another's and you're seeing other people's lives change, then what are you doing? You're planting into someone's life. That doer, you're beginning to plant as that farmer does in the time of planting, in the season of planting. What happens when you plant that seed? We understand that Galatians 6 and 9, Paul said, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap 
if we faint not. Hallelujah, church. And when I thought about what Paul said, church, when you are a doer, it does it. Sometimes the results that you're looking for today, I'm coming to give a word of encouragement today. Sometimes when you're being a doer for the Lord, then the word that, that, or the, the situation, the, the captivity isn't turning quick enough. The situation is looking bleaker and bleaker. It doesn't look like there's a promise at the end, but oh, church, I come to tell you that his time and is in our time and, and he's a faithful God and when he sees fit he'll move and he'll turn about your captivity he'll turn about your situation tonight he'll do a great work in his season if we faint not we must plant and sow if we ever plan to reap hearing and learning from the word of God that's the first step of doing so how are we ever going to plant in someone's life if we don't understand the word? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If we hear the word and we plant it in our hearts, we'll sow a seed in those lives that, will, that you don't know what kind of impact you can make. You don't know who's watching you, church, in every hour. Psalms 126 and 6, David said, He that goeth forth... And weeping, weeping, bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. That old, that old southern gospel song, bringing in the sheaves. I thought of that when I read that. When we think about when we, think about when we can come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. But how are you going to rejoice if you're not being a doer? If we hear the word, like I said, and we plant... In our heart, what's the next step of planting? It begins to grow. I feel the Lord. I know that God has planted a seed in this church, and it's grown throughout the years. I keep up with the outreach minute, all the things that's done here in this church, and I know that God's just got greater plans in store for Harriman and the Courts of Praise Church. I know that God's got a great plan. You're going to see greater things. I feel the Lord growing. When the seeds are planted and we take care of them. When you have to plant those seeds, you have to take care of them. The farmer doesn't go dig up hole the ground and plant the seed and walk away from it and come back in three months and reap a harvest. God works the same way, church. He doesn't expect you to go out to church one time a week, one time a month, and come out rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. God doesn't plan on you uh, just saying your bedtime prayers on Monday night and Tuesday through Sunday not finding time to talk, have a little talk with Jesus. God is wanting to see the planning and he wants, you to see, he wants to see it grow, but he wants to see us bring forth the effort. Second Peter 3 and 18, Peter said, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in grace, church. How do we grow in grace? How do we plant? How do we sow? If we hear the word of God, it grows in us. It's like a well springing out. You can't help but touch those lives around you. Today, are you praying for a lost loved one? Are drugs in your family? Is someone bound down by the chains of sin? I've come this way tonight to tell you that if we are a doer and we're hearing what God's saying, to us, then God says he's going to plant the seed and he's going, you're going to see growth and you're going to see it prosper and you're going to see it change about the situation. If we hear the word, we can grow. When I think about what James was trying to say there, he said, but he so who so looketh in the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. When, when you're sowing and you're, and you're sweating, over your, your, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When you're doing a work for the kingdom. Growing. Psalms chapter 1 verses 2-3. David said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law... Doeth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree 
planted by the river of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Hallelujah. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The word of the Lord tonight, church, hear it. It's all right there. David wrote it. That, you're, that it's not going to faint, it's not going to not come to pass. When we hear, we're planted. When we're planted, we can sow. When we sow, we can grow. And when we grow, we can, what is it there that it said in verse 25? It said, the, this man shall be blessed. You are a blessed man if those things are taking place in your life. You're a blessed man tonight, church. If that's, the, if that's your prayer and that's what you want to see, then God is going to bless your harvest. God is going to bless your prayers. It's a blessing. If you're doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. We are blessed for being a doer for God. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You're promised the crown of life tonight, church. Someone needs to hear that. Blessed is the man, that, when you endure this time, this time, church, that we're going in, this time that the world's going in, the turmoil and the hardships tonight, it's only going to get worse. As time goes on and the world stands still, and it's hard to want to be a hearer. We're not wanting to hear or trying to be a doer. We get discouraged. That spirit of discouragement is such a strong spirit. I've heard of a lot of people that say, Preacher, I've just got hurt in church. Or I've got hurt by the situation and I just don't want to go back. Or, or I've tried to witness and I've been shot down and, and I just, I've lost my desire to do the things, to plant seeds and sow them. And church, it's easy. The enemy wants that very much. He doesn't want to see things growing in the church. He doesn't want to see lives change for the better. He doesn't want to see the thing, the situations turn about. But I tell you what, God is greater. God has never lost a battle. And God is the one that plants the seed. God's the one that created the seed. And if God wants it to prosper, God wants it to grow tonight, then church, I've come this way to tell you that if you're a doer as well as a hearer, then God is going to grant it to you. The promise of the Lord. The promise of the Lord. Give him a hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. He'll stop you from hearing. He'll stop you from doing. He'll stop you from planting. He'll stop you from sowing. And he'll stop you from being blessed. We must face the temptation bravely. Paul said these afflictions are appointed therein too. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that hardships are going to come to us all. We're not promised flower strand pathways, and we're not promised that the cross won't get heavy. But we are promised that he'll go with us unto the ends of the world. God's with you always today. God's promise is yes and amen. God hears the cries of his children. I want to tell somebody tonight in the church that he hears you. As you're hearing him, he hears you. That old song, he heard you the first time that you cried. He heard you, his word cannot lie. I'm thankful tonight that God hears us. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 2 and 3. It says, and all these blessings shall come on thee. This is the promise of the Lord here. If you didn't listen to anything this preacher said tonight, listen here. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Hallelujah. Church, blessed in the city and blessed in the field. That's where I said your work is not in vain in the Lord. James was telling us to look in the mirror today. What do you see? Do you see yourself or do you see a reflection of who you used to be? A shell of what person you once was. 
when we're doers and hearers, the word of God, those blessings, they come and they just keep coming. Everywhere we go, the blessings of the Lord will come. They'll be in the field when we're working and they'll be in the city when we're resting. The blessings of the Lord are there. When you're looking in the mirror today, the Lord sent me by this way to explain to you this. Don't forget what oneself looks like. Just because we're in a trying time across our nation, just because that, that it seems that, and I tell you, depression numbers are at a sky high because of this uh, time when people are stay, having to stay home and having to, having to just social distance and isolate oneself from their friends and their family. Depression's at an all-time high because they don't know how, they're, they're some, and, and it's a sad truth, church, but some people's home lives ain't as good as yours was. They go home to situations that we can only dream about. So what I'm saying tonight is when you look in the mirror, do you see, if, do you see who you want to be? Or do you see who God wants you to be? He wants you to be a doer tonight, church. He wants you to hear the word of the Lord. He wants you to plant. He wants you to sow. He wants you to grow. He wants you to be blessed. A quote I'll leave you with. They who secure eternal life are doers of the word as well as hearers. One more time. They who secure eternal life are doers of the word as well as hearers. Bring them young. I ask you, church, tonight, I've, I've, I'm normally longer winded than that, but I just, I, you know, Pastor Nick knows what I'm talking about. When God's done, he's done. And I just want to say to you tonight, church, that there's a promise from the Lord that no matter what reflection is staring back at you when you look in the mirror this evening or when you go home, that God, no matter how highly you think of yourself, I promise you God thinks higher. No matter what plans that you've got for your life, God's plans are greater. And no matter what calling you think the limitations are, we serve a limitless God. Amen. I ask you tonight, church, be a doer as well as a hearer. Look in the mirror today. And maybe, maybe it's not even you. Maybe it's not even you that you're, that's on your mind tonight when this sermon's preached. Then I ask you, won't you take time to intercede on the behalf of that one that's on your mind? We know that Jesus is up there sitting on the right hand of the Father, ever living to give intercession for you and I. His ear is bent low and his heart's heavy. As, as it was the day that he traveled in the place of the skull, Golgotha, as he bore that cross for you and I. It's just as heavy today for God's children. His work that was done on Calvary, he learned his obedience through the things which he suffered. It was not in vain. He didn't, what, what, that was the hardest doer exercise there's ever been. To lay your life down for a people that was undeserving. But Jesus did it. And his thoughts of you, and his and the thought of you, you were on his mind when he was on the cross. And the plan that he's got for you, I promise you tonight, church, it surpasses anything your imagination or your mind can gather. The power of the Lord is real. The Holy Ghost is real. And church, it wants to move along these people. If we're a doer, we'll see revival. If we plant seeds and we harvest them, we'll be rejoicing under that one sinner that repented. If the angels in heaven rejoice. Church, I know you're doing a great work. I didn't come to discourage. I come to encourage that God is wanting to see a greater thing 
And the next step is that we hear more. We do more. We sow more. We plant more. And we'll reap more. We'll reap blessings. I'm not real sure how if, we have, if we're having prayer right now, Pastor Nick. But uh, what I would like to see tonight, church, is if we can, stand, up, stand to your feet across this building. I'm not much of a preacher, but God called me, and he equipped me. I'm thankful for your pastor. I know I'm thankful for what he's meant to me through the years. We spent a lot of weeks up there in Hillsboro, Ohio, on those campgrounds together. I've sung in his choir. I watched him pour himself into the youth. I've seen him be a doer firsthand in the altars to one or two in the morning, three o'clock sometimes even. The Holy Ghost fell so powerful that, you, that it's like a smog. It's weighing you down. And, and, and he's opened his pulpit up to me several times, and I never take it lightly. He's one of my favorite preachers. I, and I, he's, his ministry, I keep up with him, his devotions and everything he puts on Facebook. If I got time on my lunch break and stuff, I'm tuning in to see what Nick Hill's saying. Donnie, his father, has meant a lot to me as well throughout the years. But what I'm saying is you've got great leadership. You've got great men of God that's preparing you to be a hearer because they preach the word. And I'm asking you tonight, church, are you struggling in the doer department? Are you struggling and wanting to get got seeds of discouragement, but you want seeds of encouragement? Then I tell you tonight, there's no greater time than now. The present time, the present hour that we're standing here for God to turn around that situation. And ble- you'll see blessings upon blessings if you'll just heed to the call. I want to ask you, church, tonight, I love you. I'm thankful for this opportunity. But if you want to stay at your seat or if you want to come find a place in this altar tonight, Why don't we come and say, Lord, I want to hear you louder than I've ever heard you before. God, I want to do greater things than I've ever done before. Lord, I want, I want to be like that farmer, God, that's got a green thumb. That when you use me, God, to plant those seeds, that there's growth, greater growth. Some of the greatest crop that we've ever saw. Say, Lord, I want to be blessed. And God does want to bless you tonight. I love you, church, and I'm thankful for you. God bless you.